The next texture reading is from the incomparable James Baldwin. Now, James Baldwin serves as sort of a bridge for us between modernism and postmodernism. Um, he grew up in Harlem during the Harlem Renaissance. He was born in Harlem in 1924. And so he lived through this, um, you know, explosion of culture in the Harlem area. At the same time, he was the son, or his, his stepfather was a preacher, so his relationship with faith um, became sort of complicated and um, something that he wrote about often in his adult life. Um, he was also a queer man, so his sexuality became, you know, in conflict with those things as well. And he was also a very um, influential member of the civil rights movement. Uh, he was friends with Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and was engaged with those issues at the time that he was writing. Now, um, when William Faulkner won his Nobel Prize in 1949, he uh, made a comment about the, the shift in literature following World War II, which launches us into the postmodernist era. And William Faulkner is one of the big names in the modernist movement. He's up there with Hemingway and Fitzgerald. And William Faulkner said, Our tragedy today is a general and universal physical fear so long sustained by now that we can even bear it. There are no longer problems of the spirit. There is only the question, when will I be blown up? Because of this, the young man or woman writing today has forgotten the problems of the human heart in conflict with itself, which alone can make good writing because only that is worth writing about, worth the agony and sweat. And James Baldwin um, is writing in this post-war uh, um, world that is very concerned with these sorts of things, but he is also writing in the spirit of that heart and that um, those problems of the inner world that uh, modernists were so interested in. So Sonny's Blues is about two brothers um, from Harlem. And after, you know, James Baldwin became an adult, he um, was very, he was, he was very um, sort of out in the media. He did a lot of interviews. He has a very famous debate um, with William Buckley about racism. He was very outspoken about his views. And he... Um, was engaged with this idea as he was starting to formulate Sonny's Blues. So in an interview <clears throat> prior to the publication, um, he was asked about growing up in Harlem. And he said, I'm aware that something very terrible has happened, which is very hard to describe. So although the Harlem Renaissance was this explosion of and celebration of culture, as we move uh, into the post-war era, we are living, we are working up to the civil rights movement, and we are living in a very fraught time, um, not just on a global level, but also in, in James Baldwin's case, um, and an identity level, he's dealing with a lot of, of racial conflict in his world. And <laughs> what he was seeing in Harlem um, is, you know, there was a lot of a lot of poverty, there was a lot of violence, there was a lot of crime, there was a lot of drugs, and he was seeing, you know, young men sort of brought into this cycle that felt impossible to break in many ways. And the story of Sonny's Blues deals with two brothers who grew up in this time where something terrible has happened. Um, one of them becomes a math teacher, and one of them is an addict. And these two characters and the way that they engage with each other is um, sort of a contrast between these two ideas of escaping your circumstances versus being a victim of your circumstances. Now, in a very postmodern way, James Baldwin is kind of questioning the very idea of that. Um, I will uh, in the next part of this series, have you watched an interview from James Baldwin um, where he comments on the idea of escaping directly? But what you have in this story is one brother whose problems are very explicit, very obvious, and one brother whose problems are more implicit. And the way that they grapple with their different forms of suffering is uh, an important key part of this story and its theme. The story is also directly involved with the idea of jazz and blues as it developed, you know, later in the century, um, after the Harlem Renaissance, and what uh, it means to, uh, you know, engage with that lifestyle versus other, uh, you know, other ways of being in, in the post-war world. Um, and going back to James Baldwin's upbringing, um, his religious upbringing, 
he had he grappled with it quite a bit as an adult his first novel go tell it on the mountain deals with this as do many of his essays um and like i say he was an outspoken man he was not quiet about it um and but this story really interestingly uses a lot of uh, religious imagery um bears a resemblance to stories like the prodigal son or even perhaps Cain and abel uh and uses those things and sort of reinvents them in a way that is very postmodern in spirit and form as as well in in terms of you know the bridge between modernism and postmodernism um, this story involves you know nonlinear timelines it involves multiple perspectives a sort of blurring of the lines between reality uh which is something to pay attention to and the ultimate question that i think is at the heart of this story is is this a story that is hopeful or hopeless um james baldwin is a, a an incredible uh mind and a beautiful writer um i uh this is i, I think you know a, a gorgeous story as much as it is, as it is heart-wrenching um so in the next interview i want you to um, you know, pay attention to the way that he sees the world and uh, see how you can apply those ideas to the idea of your circumstances and compassion and suffering in the story. <laughs>